Carol, you have been an inspiration to your students and your colleagues in promoting teaching excellence here in GVS. Thank you for being here today. Thank you, it's my absolute pleasure. So, you are currently our lecturer here at GVS. Tell me, what do you teach here at GVS and why did you choose teaching with us? Well, I'm honoured to say that I'm on the Canterbury Christchurch University Partnership okay. as a lecturer in business and tourism management. And I was actually introduced um, to GBS by a friend, a colleague, and they said, look, there are opportunities and it's a great place. So I quickly, you know, went through the process and was very fortunate to be selected. And now I've had a wonderful opportunity as a lecturer um, with the pleasure of teaching and learning as I go along. Oh, isn't that great? Congratulations on your recent award with the International Institute for Peace Through Tourism. Well done. Thank you. Now, my question is, do you want to tell us more about this award? Well, yes, it's, it's nice to share that information. I've actually been involved in the tourism industry for over 20 years. Oh. I've done a lot of work, particularly with the Caribbean, in my former role as director for the Caribbean Tourism Organisation for UK and Europe. A lot of work in responsible tourism, sustainable development, working mm -hmm. in communities. And the International Institute for Peace, through tourism, um, I was nominated for the award and the nomination was accepted. And I was fortunate at ITB in Berlin this year oh, yeah. to receive the award, <laughs> along with other women who've done a lot of work in tourism. And really, it's, it's just recognition for the fact that we're committed to tourism, we care about communities, and that we're proud of the work we do and also proud that it's recognised. It was a great award and it certainly motivates me while I'm lecturing to also continue as a tourism practitioner. That's wonderful to see even your students and your colleagues celebrating you. So tell us, what is your teaching philosophy? My philosophy really is to work very hard with the students to ensure that they actually embrace learning. Mm. Many of our students have been out of full-time education for, for a number of That's years true, yes. and it is a learning curve for them. Yes. So they, they have to make changes to their personal lives. Mm -hmm. You know, life gets in the way, as they we say. So the philosophy <laughs> is to work with them and to share that I too took that path. Mm. I left school, um, worked for a number of years then went back to get to get my first degree and I was working full time as well so mm. I understand the challenges that they face so I can always show a lot of empathy but I can also not only show empathy but say I am also an example of someone who took the same path yes. work studied completed their degree and can actually talk about the difference that having a degree has made to my career and to my life. And through my experience, I'm able to encourage them nonstop, even though it can sometimes be challenging, to always focus on the goal, what it is that they want and why they enrolled with GBS in the first place. For the benefit of our viewers, um, do you want to give us an example of how you connect with your learners, most especially reluctant ones? <laughs> that. Do you know, sometimes... <laughs> <laughs> you always get the reluctant ones behind the class. So, you know, yeah. I know we always get that one student, isn't it? Do you know what? A lot of reluctance comes through fear of the unknown. Ah, and it's about ah. really working with our students to find out what are you afraid of? Mm. And sometimes students students will open up and they will share that they're afraid of, you know, when they first joined, it was really exciting. But then as they go through the induction yes. and they become more aware of all the different aspects, all the things they'll have to do, they, they, they become afraid of the unknown. Yes. And that helps yes. to kind of create this atmosphere of reluctance. Yes. So I think even though our students go for a wonderful induction program, mm -hmm. we have to continue to break things down for them, to reassure them that it's yes. manageable. We've done it ourselves as lecturers yes. but it's always to break it down work with them and also a lot of one-on-one -on -one time you know mm. just to especially with the reluctant ones or yes. even not reluctant but sometimes shy a little mm. withdrawn just to spend a little time and really break down what is it that is creating that barrier for you and to see how either we can help them as lecturers or if we can't help them we certainly have other support teams within GBS that can definitely help them and it's making sure that they get the the right support. Oh, that's great. Now, how do you assess your students' progress 
Um, and why do you think this is essential here at GBS? Well, for me, I assess it in many ways. Of course, okay. we, we will look at the grades. You know, the stats are always there mm -hmm. for us. But we also have to look at the behaviour of students as well. I agree. Those who come in as, and at first they're reluctant, they're shy, etc. Yeah. We've got to work harder mm -hmm. to ensure that they participate in our formative assessments, all the things that we do in the classroom. We've got to be engaging, yeah. let them know it's manageable. And if we see a change in behaviour throughout the time we spend with them, then we're able to assess that, yes, by encouraging them to work in groups, to work on assessments and just really to participate wholeheartedly we will see the changes and development and they will recognize it in themselves also oh and diving straight into my final question for today you've been doing greatly well what does a great lesson look like to you and how important is the role of a positive and safe atmosphere for learning for your learners here at GBS? Well, first of all, for me, a great lesson is definitely when technology works. <laughs> <laughs> we all have that all the time, don't we? Do have that. Yes, but also as well, when I myself have prepared yes. and therefore I can engage with my students, I can answer mm. questions, yes. I can get them to think outside the box yes. and to answer, and I always stress there are no wrong answers. Sometimes we have to build on that answer a little bit and help them and coach things out. But there are no wrong answers. To the next point of your question about a safe environment, we have to ensure that our students feel safe enough to speak and that they have the confidence to participate. Because as we've said before, we're working with adult learners. Yes. They have other roles in life. And then when they come into the classroom, sometimes it's a different role mm -hmm. and they might not feel secure about that role. Yes. So it's about creating that space where we encourage people to participate, to work in group, to answer questions, to be a part of the assessments and always offer fair and encouragement. And that's why I like this method that we have of feeding forward. I'd never actually heard about feed forward. <laughs> until I joined GBS oh, yeah and I yes. use it a lot yes. and I always say to the students you know when you get the, the feed forward it is to help you to grow That's true. and we shouldn't only wait until like they're doing written assessments to do that but even in the classroom if someone's presented if they finally ask a question or they're engaging you know we're encouraging we're supporting and we feed it forward and just encourage them as to how they can continue to grow in, in the relationship that they have with GBS. Carol, thank you so much for being here today. It's been a pleasure having you. Thank you. My pleasure, thank you so much.